Hi guys, welcome to today's live. Uh, today is day 16 of our, uh, you know, 21 days to a new you challenge. Today, uh, I would really like it if uh, you guys would consider that all of us have schedules that are kind of not in our hands. We work odd hours, we live quite a distance from our home. And uh, in all the traveling and, uh, uh, you know, just the busy, busy, busy life that we all live, um, it's kind of difficult to stick to your, you know, health plan, so to speak. I mean, you may have decided on a particular day that you're going to be very serious about your health. You're going to work out regularly. You're going to eat well. And uh, then lo and behold, you're on a, you know, two-day travel spree for some reason. Or in the instance of all my, all my actor friends and acquaintances, you're uh, on a shoot, especially a night shoot. And it's been two days or three days or a month and you just haven't been able to keep track of your diet or whatever so uh i had a lot of people uh, right from the beginning of the series writing in and asking me what uh, tips i might be able to give to people who travel a lot i don't mean for people who go on vacation occasionally we talked about that also on how to keep your vacation um, how to keep to your fitness plan even when you're traveling for a holiday but here i'm talking to people who travel a lot for work or who have very odd hours like, uh, for instance, I, I have a friend who works in the airlines and in the tourism industry and uh, they travel a lot. And by that, I mean, almost three, three weeks of the month, they are in and out and on a very strange routine. It's very hard for them to stick to a particular class or a particular gym uh, routine or a particular diet because in today's day and age, it's, it's not like you have a lot of help in order to, uh, you know, pack well and eat well and whatever. So... Um, my husband's in the entertainment field also, he's an actor, so his schedule is kind of all right. He does night shoots, he could be shooting nights for 15 days in a row, in which case, uh, you know, your diet and your exercise and everything just goes for a toss. So it's not like uh, you need to come back after a night shoot, be able to maintain your routine for the day the next day. So uh, these tips could work for both people, both kinds of people rather. So try and see <coughs> what works for you. Uh, the first thing I would say is that if you're a frequent traveler, you always have, you know, your travel stuff. You've got a neck thing, a neck pillow. You carry your uh, eye mask, I suppose. You might be carrying some sort of, uh, you know, in case you catch a stomach bug, you, you have some enterocrinol with you. So I would suggest all of these people should also get uh, resistance bands and pack those in as part of their hand luggage. It should go in your strolly, not in your pack luggage. Same goes for a good pair of running shoes. So something that's lightweight and doesn't take up a lot of weight and space, you can chuck them in your bag. So wherever you are, you're able to get in a decent workout. Uh, there are like a million workouts available online and there's one set of pure body weight exercises which I should be posting at the end of this talk, which anybody can use and you can do them anywhere. And um, at the very least, try and you know mark off 10 minutes in any day, anywhere that you might be to do some of them. So uh, you're not you know, you're, you're slowly building on your fitness rather than losing out on it. Uh, yeah, as far as resistance tubing goes, you get uh, resistance tubing sets which also fit into doors. So uh, a door hinge rather. So if you can get hold of one of those, they're very lightweight. They just roll up and pack in your bag and they don't take up much space. And if you're really serious about it. So why is it that you would carry a neck pillow? Why is it that you would carry an eye mask? Because you're anticipating traveling long hours and you're anticipating maybe being tired and having to catch a quick wink somewhere. So maybe you could anticipate needing to work out as well rather than, you know, just leaving it on the side. So prepare for it. If you prepared for it, you're likely to get it, more likely to get it done than if you hadn't prepared for it at all. So um, that's one tip. The second tip I had used the last time as well when we were on uh, talking about the vacation break that was on carrying a bottle of water with you. So it may not be easy to buy water. Anywhere else in the world you would have to purchase water. Not in India. India we are, I think it's a rule that you have to serve water to anybody free of cost. You can't uh, charge for it. Um, but if you're abroad, having a, um, a, a self-filtering bottle of water, they're available on, online a lot now. Just go online and check. Um, they're like your own personal aqua guard. You can fill tap water in it. It'll filter it out 99% germ skilled. And you have great clean drinking water with you. A lot of people find that uh, uh, this was my experience once that a bottle of water is a little bit more expensive or almost the same cost as buying a juice. So people buy the juice. And if you're going to 
consume juice regularly then it's just hits and hits and hits of sugar which are not too healthy second thing that a third thing you can do is uh, prepare pack uh, a few snacks if you can't you know any everybody can carry a small tupperware of say hummus or a couple of nuts from home not plain peanuts but actual i mean aeroplane peanuts is a very high in salt and fat you could take some roasted almonds along you could take some you could take a trail mix of your rose of your own along i always advise my clients to take small uh, buy um, 100 gram uh, 100 or 200 gram packets plastic ziploc packets you get them at your uh, stationery stores now and you just make a roasted mix of a few nuts pumpkin seeds or a, a couple of dry fruits nothing too heavy because dry fruits are also high in sugar and they're calorie dense but as far as a snack goes you probably be better off having a couple of figs than having a candy bar or something even granola bars these days are the packaged ones are extremely extremely uh, calorie dense so uh, and you pack them pack this mix in a in little uh, ziploc packets and keep it in your bag so you can you, you know if you're on a long layover the munchies hit you you've got something good to eat i also make a what is called a party mix which has got some roasted chana some uh, a couple of you know a handful of those cheese links that you get anything that you can put together and put in this nice and savory you can even put uh, almonds and roast them with a nice savory flavor it comes out really well i'll be posting recipes for this on my website so if anybody is uh, if you guys are interested you can just literally uh, download and use them and i have these packets ready fruit travels very well citrus fruit fruits travel well so you can carry an orange or an apple or two in your bag and this will all make sure that when you are on the go or you are on a, your your flight is delayed and you are waiting in the lounge you are able to eat something that is healthy rather than eating something that's expensive and unhealthy for you please don't fall for the juices and smoothies we've talked about that before they're just concentrated sugar so uh, it would probably be better if you can get a fruit or have a bag of uh, you know some munchies ready with you at all times uh it's not always possible you could probably purchase something which could last you two or three days also if you're if you're on your way back from somewhere and you can't pack it easily then uh, you could consider something like that you could get yourself a can of hummus you could get yourself a couple of carrot sticks or vegetable sticks and uh, such things are easy to find now it's not as difficult as it used to be once upon a time um another thing i wanted to talk about was uh, your diet so uh, two things happen one is that when you are out a lot you eat out a lot with people we talked about eating out yesterday and you you have a, a access to an ex- entire breakfast buffet and uh, an ex- an access to freshly baked breads and jam and loads and loads of butter and often when you are in a buffet uh, if your choice is between uh, eating an omelet and having the waffle from the waffle pan you probably choose the waffles because you know it's going to make those for me at home i'll have that that's okay once in a while but if you do this regular two three times a month the calories and the fat will pile on so um when you're at a breakfast buffet try and get some sort of eggs to order if you can get uh, boiled eggs straight even a fry or an omelet is fine choose the fruits the real fruits not the juices um try and stay away from the fat fatty cheeses maybe a little bit would be okay and the cold cuts because those two are extremely extremely high in fat and uh, so try and pick healthy uh, for the most part the same would apply for your uh, lunch and dinner buffets also if they are uh, accessible to you so uh, if you're going to have soup have a have a lighter soup don't have the cream or anything vegetable soup is good minestrone soup is good or drink a clear soup before you start the rest of your meal is good bread sticks are okay but not too many of them stick to about 3 not more than that and um, a lavash would be the same about 3 pieces of lavash should be all right not more so try and avoid the bread rolls they're uh, just really not good for you and uh, they're no fun without the butter so i would avoid the butter so you avoid the bread rolls um other than that try and make friends with a skipping rope or a resistance tubing set or your hotel room and doing jumping jacks see you have to choose as a person whose lifestyle is like this to work some sort of health uh, plan into your day uh it can't be that because i travel a lot i completely neglect my health because it does tell on you physically later on it's not just about losing weight that's a you know it starts with that but it ends up being a lot of problems i've had people come to me about uh, ha- having um, developed thyroid issues because of traveling irregular hours and eating irregular hours um pcos is on the rise insulin resistance is on the rise and once you have insulin resistance you are well on your way to getting pre diabetes and then diabetes so this is a serious thing i'm talking about i'm not talking about uh, 
the aesthetics of it or how you look. How you look is a side effect, like I always say. But for your basic health, you need to know what tools you can have with you so that uh, no matter how much you travel, how strenuous, how stressful your day is or your schedule is or your month is, you are able to um, stay with some sort of a fitness plan and a health plan for yourself. And health plans always have to be positive, moving and productive. They can't be, uh, it's not a preventive thing. It's not like I am going to diet, I'm going to go on travel, travel for so long and I'll just to prevent ill health, I'll just do a little bit of patchwork. That would be like putting a bandaid on top of a gunshot wound. I would not recommend that. I would expect that you plan it into your life because this is the life I have chosen for myself. I do this, this, this for a living. And therefore, it is my responsibility to find a way to include health into my plans as well. So um, that's what I would request each and every one of you who are tuned in to do that. Uh, don't look at it as an interruption to your life. Look at it as part of your life. Don't look at your work as an interruption to your uh, exercise and fitness routine. Look at it as something that has to work symbiotically together. So um, if you can find things that you can do definitely every single day, no matter where you are, that that would make your life and your path a lot more easier. So, um, yeah, so I, I, another thing I wanted to talk about was uh, we talked about water. We talked about how you can uh, find ways to, um, you know, add exercise to your daily routine, no matter how you're, you know, maybe away from a gym or whatever. But the thing is that if you're going to be traveling a lot, then maybe it makes sense along with your uh, your travel accessories to also pack a pair of sneakers and uh, resistance tubing. Find a place, take five minutes, work out. You know, uh, a lot of hotels have access to the gym. A lot of have, uh, hotels have, uh, a lot of airport lounges, as a matter of fact, ha have uh, access to some sort of gym or the other. So if you're on a long layover, you could perhaps try that. Um, you know, all, we all have uh, access to music. So you have something or the other on your phone. And if you have your walking shoes, just walk. If you're going to be in the lounge for a long time, just take, pick a spot and pick another spot, which is pretty far away from each other and walk and walk as quickly as you can. And it would be, it would be the difference between you sitting for long hours, which is very, very unhealthy in and of itself. And you actually getting some sort of physical exercise in. So, uh, though it's, it seems like, a, uh, you know, it, it seems like, you know, an adjustment to make or something that you need to, it's, it's more of a mental adjustment than a, uh, actual inconvenience if you really think about it. So like I said before, if you plan to put this into your life, it will start making a huge difference and you'll start, it will become a habit eventually. So all of you guys who do travel a lot for work or who have uh, long schedules or who, for instance, like uh, Harsh, I think, who's tuned in right now, I, has a, a irregular schedule because he acts. So he's out on a shoot at night, for instance. But you're not shooting all the time. You've got breaks in between each shot. So <clears throat> if you're going to be sitting around for an hour, perhaps you could just put some music on, put your shoes on and just walk. So you're getting your exercise as well. You could just do a set of push-ups. You could do a set of pull-ups, whatever you can get access to. Uh, I was seeing, I was, uh, I saw this video online of a, a guy who's showing how you can do rowing exercises with just a door frame. So if you really want to uh, insert fitness into your life somehow or the other, then you can find ways. There are ways to do that. Um, yeah. Now, one thing that a lot of people, now I will not talk about only buffets because you also have to entertain, right? So you'll probably be going out to a restaurant somewhere and uh, or you'll be in the coffee shop at a hotel, for instance, if you're staying for a long while. Usually, every meal that you would order would be uh, some sort of protein, some sort of potato, and some vegetables and usually the vegetables are like this little this much and this mashed potato for instance and there's some roast chicken or grilled chicken or or, or if you're vegetarian then some sort of uh, shashlik item what i would suggest was whenever you go there and you're going to eat first of all get your portions split into two pack half of it you can always take it back with you to the hotel and eat it later we'll talk about the hotel munchies afterwards uh and replace your potatoes with vegetables Always ask the guys to say, just don't give me the fries or the mash. Just give me an extra portion of grilled veg veggies, whatever you have. You don't have grilled veggies, just give me some chopped up salad. And everybody will be happy to oblige because you're a guest after all. And the customer is always right, right? So uh, ask for what's good for you. And that small change will make a difference. Try and avoid alcohol on a daily basis. Be within some sort of reasonable limit. Uh, you are not holidaying. You're there for work, which means this is not going to return to normal 
after you get back to work, this is how your life is. So you're going to have to make better choices on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, now about carrying doggy bags, a lot of portions that are served in restaurants are always larger and heavier in calories and in fat than uh, any nutritionist would recommend you eat. So if you eat your entire plate, you're already eating more than your daily requirement and you're going to eat that three times a day. So um, firstly, ask for a replacement. Don't take the starch, take the veggies if you can. Try and uh, pack half of it and take it back home. By home, I mean the hotel. Why? Because usually because of this whole schedule thing and because of the fact that you're living in a hotel and you tend to be a little bit homesick perhaps, you tend to open a bag of chips that are in the minibar. That minibar is the worst enemy in the world of everybody who's trying to lose weight, by the way. So the first thing you do when you check into a hotel is ask them to clear the minibar. So that temptation is not there. You can always take yourself, there's always a hot water kettle. You can always take yourself some tea bags with you and uh, carry lemon tea, carry green tea, carry um, hibiscus tea with you. There's very, very good. Uh, Sudarshana says this discussion is really helpful. I need to travel for work quite often. Hi, Sudarshana. Thank you. Yeah, I know. We've talked about this. And um, it is a difficult situation because people don't, because I'm sure that you go into this unprepared and not realizing that uh, this is not a temporary thing. This is a permanent thing for you. So how would you arrange your life accordingly? That's what we are talking about. So um, what were we talking about? Yeah. So when you get into your hotel room at night and you're tired, you had a long day, you would probably maybe open a can of something or just open a packet of peanuts or it's just... You know, you get this there, so you may as well eat it. And there's always some sort of really unhealthy for you candy bar or something like that. Not only is it expensive to eat out of a mini bar, which is a whole different topic, but it's really unhealthy. So if you already, suppose you packed something from uh, wherever you were having dinner and you took a doggy bag home, this would be the time you'd sit and eat that. So your, your calories have been split into two meals and you're much less uh, likely to be eating something really rotten for you if you eat like that, especially if you ask for the veggies. Uh, have a glass of green tea. Have a glass of, uh, you know, uh, you have your snack packets, obviously, because I talked about that. You can have one of those. And uh, these are things that you need to provide for because these will be temptations that will hit you on the road. And because you're, um, you know, you're not in your best state of mind because you're traveling and you get a little disoriented when you're on the go or not. So you don't make the best choices. So it's just easier to have the groundwork already set for you so that you make better choices when the uh, occasion demands it. Um, <clears throat> is there anything else you guys would like to know in terms of how you would manage better if you were traveling for work, what you could do? Please do ask. I'd be happy to take a question uh, right now. Uh, there are a couple of other things I wanted to mention. Um, we were talking about mini bars. Yes, I spoke about that. We were talking about eating, um, you know, yeah, one thing that's important, airline food. Um, airline food is not very pleasant but the thing is it's there and they plonk it in front of you and what ends up happening is uh, uh, yes Sudarshana Sudarshana says should we carry nuts with us Sudarshana depends on which nuts you're talking about almonds are good, walnuts are good remember that nuts are very high in calories and uh, you don't want to have like an entire bowl full you want to carry them in small measurable uh, portion sizes so that's why I was talking about uh, this previously that you should have small Ziploc packets and budget your nuts in that in terms of calories Make sure that you chew them slowly and you maybe combine them with a fruit or something so that you're uh, getting both the... Uh, <clears throat> ah, she says, I have full day meetings sometimes and we miss our lunch. So see, that's, the, that's where preparation comes in. If you have, um, even if you were to carry, let's take the worst case scenario, you were to carry a cheese sandwich from home with a little chutney or maybe a couple of slices of vegetable. Pack it up. It doesn't go bad. Okay, cucumber, tomato, uh, green chutney, not made with coconut, just plain green chutney. Little cheese, you can do without it if you want to. Pack it in a uh, little sandwich bag or in cling film. It takes about two minutes to make and you pack two of those in your in your uh, bag with you. And maybe one fruit. And your lunch is already there. It's on the desk and nobody's going to blame you for eating. I hope. So if you can take two minutes out to go and gobble up that vegetable sandwich, it's better than having skipped a meal. Because you realize that when you come back or you eat after that, you're going to binge because you're hungry from being, you know, uh, empty stomach all day. So, uh, yeah, so try and prepare. Ask, ask, what can I do? Can I carry something to drink? If all else fails, you can, that would be a time you'd carry a meal replacement shape. If you have absolutely no other option. You see, uh, meal replacements are called that for a reason. They're replacements. They're not to be had along with your regular meals. 
So if you're going to have a meal replacement shake, this would be the time to have it when you're not able to eat for whatever reason. It's not ideal. It's not optimal. I don't recommend them at all as weight loss uh, cures in the least bit because eventually uh, there is a certain merit to eating the way eating good food. But uh, if you don't have any other choice, like you've hit rock bottom and you don't know what else to do, you could just carry one of those and make sure that at your lunch time, at your meal time, you have that. So that's what I was coming to with the uh, airline meals also. If you have a schedule in your day that I eat breakfast between this time to this time, give yourself an hour. And I eat lunch between this time to this time. And I eat dinner between this time to this time. Let's assume you've given yourself these. these and then check in a week, uh, in a week, how many times you actually hit those numbers. How many times a week you actually manage to eat your breakfast from this time to this time or X, Y, Z, like 8 to 9 a.m. Or have lunch between 1 and 2 p.m. Or have dinner. If you miss most of them, then your schedule is too erratic. You need to find a way to either allow the lunch to be had simultaneously to the work or take a break from work for 10 minutes and get some time to eat. It is not advisable. And I don't think that's just me. Okay. I hope that you guys are working in a company where you can at least stand up and say, you know what, guys, I need 10 minutes to eat my food. And maybe if that's a culture you create, then everybody else will follow it and your whole office will be healthier and thanking you for it. So there is no glory in missing your meals. Uh, none at all. And uh, eventually our health is our own. When you have health issues that crop up later on, you can't blame your office and your work hours. Okay. So, and they're not going to come and take care of you either. So try and be aware of uh, why you're doing what you're doing. Are you just going with the flow because everybody else smokes, so I smoke because everybody else, you know, if you've all watched this episode of friends where Rachel's trying to smoke just because her boss does. So she's an in crowd. Is it really a smart habit? No, if we laughed at it then, but if everybody else is skipping lunch, do I need to do it? Ask yourself that question. So um, perhaps you can you can bring in this culture of, okay, I've got, I'll have a working lunch then. I'm still in the discussion. I will be either consuming this or that. I will have homo sticks and uh, hummus and veg sticks or I will have a sandwich or I will have my shake and then I will eat a proper meal for dinner. At least I'm not starving. Think about what you can do. And if you guys want tips and help, I'm always available. Please do ask. Uh, airline, airplane food. Airplane food is no good for you at all to begin with. But what happens is say you boarded a flight at 9 p.m. And uh, you've had dinner already at 8. But they serve you a meal because that's a dinner flight. And you eat that too. And then you land and then you eat there too. So you're eating triple the calories that you really need. And you're only eating it because it's been given to you. So think about it. Maybe you could just have a soup if you know you're going to be served on the flight. Or you could refuse the meal on the flight. It's really up to you how you want to deal with it. And just choose a, maybe a cup of green tea or a coffee. Or if they have, if by chance they have some sort of soup, you could have that. But uh, they're usually those packaged kinds, they're no good for you. Um, think about how you can... See, this is, again, I'm not referring to people who do this once in a while. I'm talking to people who do this a lot. So if you're going to be on the set a lot, if you're going to be on the airplane a lot, if you're going to be waiting around on standby for your flight a lot, then you need to have provisions made so that your health doesn't suffer. <clears throat> so... Um, so for me, for instance, if I'm going to travel, my goal is to stay fit. My goal is to stay healthy. So I'm going to prepare accordingly. So I'm not traveling anywhere without my running shoes. I'm not traveling anywhere without either. You know, you get these um, uh, dumbbells that you can actually fill with water. They're, they're uh, empty. So they're light when they're uh, carried along. And you can fill them with water from your tap in the hotel room. And they're about, I think, two and a half pounds. They're not very heavy, but they work. I could show you those sometime. I, have, I had a pair someplace. They're teeny, but they're better than doing nothing. According to me, the resistance band is the smartest because you can adjust the uh, intensity of the workout according to what you feel. Make it a part of your life, guys. Work has become part of your life. Travel has become part of your life. If you don't make health a part of your life, it's not going to take, it's not going to take care of itself, is what I mean. You have to actively participate in it for it to uh, show the results that you really want from it. So I'm just going to recap what we've discussed so far. Hi, Mansi. Dr. Mansi is here. She's a physiotherapist and she's sad. Um, so uh, right from the beginning, we talked about um, uh, packing in a certain way because you know you're going to have to provide for your own health and fitness. So make sure that you carry a resistance tubing. And this is in your carry-on luggage, not in your pack luggage. Because if you're in a transit for a long time or you have a layover, you have your carry-on with you and you can still do something. Uh, carry your walking shoes with you. Either wear them. If you're traveling a lot, but if, again, if you're a, a, you work for an airline, then you would not be wearing walking shoes, but you can always pack them also. So buy a great lightweight pair and shove them in your overnight luggage. Um, 
try and uh, provide for a portable water uh, bottle something a, a self filtering water bottle excuse me something that will definitely be with you all the time and even if you have tap access to tap water you can always consume water as opposed to having high calorie beverages or just having coffee because water is too expensive to buy abroad um especially inside airports by the way the water and stuff is extremely expensive for some reason so it makes no sense to buy it you may as well just get hold of a water bottle and make sure that you can drink water anytime um there are a couple of companies which do that our very own aquaguard does it and uh, there's a company abroad called prita i think which has uh, self filtering bottles and um, try and invest invest in one of those it's extremely extremely handy um buffets i said i, I was talking about you want to keep stay steer clear of the breads if you can steer clear of the very heavy cheeses and dips and uh, try and choose a good protein for breakfast try and have fruit and a couple of nuts if you can these things are available on the buffet by the way but a lot of us because you get carried away by the pancakes and the waffles you end up going for that because you think oh i'm you know out i'm away from home so it's okay but again if you're on vacation and this is all going to end in a week's time and you're going back to your regular routine that makes sense but if that's how you live then those are not the choices i would advise for you then choose the eggs choose the fruit choose a couple of vegetables if you can uh <clears throat> third thing we talked about fourth thing was about how you travel prepared so i advise that you get a, a, a get plastic packets ziploc bags you get them at all stationery stores now and uh, make sure that you pre portion a couple of packets of snacks they can be roasted nuts and by nuts you can you don't have to eat only almonds you can have chana as well which is much lighter and uh, ha- higher in fiber so give them a little roast with olive oil uh, and a couple of herbs some almonds thrown in some few little cheeseling type things thrown in so it's a little snack but it's much lighter than what you would get lighter also in salt i mean those snacks in a packet are very high in sodium and uh, really really not good so uh, pack those you can pack about five packets in your uh, carry on or in your backpack or even your purse and carry a fruit or two especially if you're going to be out all day an, an orange travels well an apple travels well any fruit that you can get that doesn't squish you can carry um if you have an option to make a sandwich take it along if you hummus and uh, sticks you can take along but then that would be one way when you're when you're there what do you do so uh, usually if you eat out you can always carry back a doggy bag make sure that you can keep it in the uh, your mini bar ka fridge have your mini bar cleared primarily because it's very tempting to eat from the mini bar and uh, very very unhealthy calorie packed stuff in there so get rid of it try and get yourself set yourself up for success So if you're going to be going out for dinner, always ask for a portion of vegetables instead of your potato, and then split the thing in half, pack half of it, eat half of it. So when you come back to the hotel room and you're feeling peckish at night, you're feeling lonely, and we tend to reward ourselves with food always. You eat that rather than eating something that's from the mini bar and extremely unhealthy. Um, carry green tea sachets with you, uh, tea bags. It doesn't have to be green tea; it can be herbal tea also. Just if you're stressed and you want chamomile or you want lavender, carry it along. and all you need is hot water which is always available and you can just have a you know a nice hot mug of uh, tea at night and you, it will help you sleep as well so uh, these have been my tips so far on how you can uh, you know make your lifestyle if you have an irregular lifestyle if you travel a lot or if you have an um, irregular hours like uh, people who uh, are in the uh, you know television or film industry and they have it they find it difficult to stick to a particular uh, regime there are people who are able to carry stuff from home because they've got help a lot of us don't have help a lot of us do our own work ourselves plus you know have to provide for other people as well so it it would be easier if you could just make some things very simple carry something that's light and it would be just a few degrees better than say for instance as darshana said better than missing lunch would be to have a vegetable sandwich preferably homemade better than uh, uh, a lot of people don't even have time to order when they're in a meeting and that happens so ordering in is never a really good plan but maybe it would take you 5 minutes to make that sandwich in the morning and you have it you know so it's ready and you've got some fresh vegetables and something nutritious has gone in better than starving all day and then binging at night so set yourself up for success if you want individual plans on your particular lifestyle we can sit together and work one out that's what i do um that's it so if there are other questions you guys have please do ask and uh, 
my website is www.supritisingh.com i'll be posting some uh, tips over there i will also post that uh, sheet of body weight exercises over here on this chat as well as on uh, my website so you can check that out also and um, i have an entire series of uh, these videos that we've done this is my 21 days to a new you series uh, i ha i we are on day 16 now and all of these videos are also available my, on my youtube channel uh, supriti excellence coach so if you have missed the previous ones you can go ahead and watch those on the on youtube at your convenience the reason why this was um, i call myself an excellence coach i don't call myself a perfection coach i don't uh, i don't expect people to be perfect i expect expect people to uh, push themselves to their own maximum capacity as much as possible every day and that's being excellent that means wherever you are today you can push yourself to whatever is the most you can eke out of your life and yourself that's my excellence coach that's my job that's for um that's to push you hi harsh harsh asks what about skipping breakfast and uh, what about intermittent fasting uh intermittent fasting is a huge topic i'll probably discuss it one of these days i want to pick up a few a uh, basic diets that people have been talking a lot about one is intermittent fasting one is keto and uh, one is primal or paleo those are the three most popular ones currently so we'll be addressing that on one day in the future uh you see my my view is keep it always stick to a program that suits your lifestyle have an understanding of what suits your lifestyle if i go to a store and uh, for instance i want to buy a lehenga for a wedding right and i go and i buy a i, I go to the guy and i say uh, i need a lehenga meko ready made lehenga chahiye and the guy will say cool so now i'm really petite okay so i i'm going to choose this lehenga which was designed for a person who's 58 because models are 58 right and then the entire embroidery and brocade work is at the bottom of the skirt so am i if i'm going to buy that thing and force myself to wear it i'm going to be walking around on stilts so that i can show off that brocade bottom right so i have done the wrong thing i've gone and chosen something that was not designed for me it's never going to suit it will always be clumsy and awkward so your lifestyle your diet your workout plan has to be something that suits you so that it requires great understanding of where you are what has worked for you in the past what has not worked for you in the past just because something is in a book today or in the news today doesn't mean it's going to work for you and if it does it may not work long term so there is a fear that you say follow an x amount x kind of diet today and you uh, you give it up because it's not suiting your current lifestyle the bounce back is a lot worse like we talked about the before picture the after picture and the after after picture and the after after picture is kind of unpleasant always skipping breakfast again um i never advise anybody to skip breakfast because breakfast is the only meal that you're sure to get full nutrition in your home that's how i see it so you know you are going to get if you really want to have a good breakfast you want to eat oatmeal and egg or a stir fried i don't know a spinach frittata you can make one at home first thing in the morning before you leave the house and then during the day you really don't know what's happening what's coming or going so the nutrition that you're getting during the day or the calories you're consuming during the day depending on what your goals are you have no control over but breakfast you do so i always recommend that people eat a good breakfast and leave the house always that is my take so far I hope that answers your questions, Harsh. Um, uh, yeah, so that's a, that is it from me today. I think if there are any queries, please do let me know. I'd love to answer them, and I will be taking up. Uh, I think not probably not tomorrow. Tomorrow, I think we'll be discussing uh, hormonal weight gain and uh, why that happens and how that happens, and uh, also closely related to that will be metabolic syndrome. So uh, that's a question mark. That's how. Um, insulin resistance eventually has these you know it's a whole myriad of things that come together you can develop pcos you know high cholesterol in spite of your supposedly your cholesterol intake being quite okay but your uh, total cholesterol level seems to be going up constantly these are all a cluster of symptoms that come together to be called um, metabolic syndrome and it's been recently discovered by about 20 years ago and uh, a lot of us have fallen prey to it because of unhealthy lifestyles and uh, eating unhealthy regularly so uh, i'll be talking about that tomorrow day after mm -hmm. most likely i'll be dealing with a couple of well they're not really fad diets but they're diets so to speak and a lot of people ask me should i do this kind of a diet or that kind of diet as harsh asked about intermittent fasting is the in thing right now and everybody's talking about it 
so uh, i will talk about those in a from a purely nutritional perspective and uh, why uh, they would or would not work for you please once again understand that something that if you're getting paid a uh, million dollars per episode like say the cast of friends used to be then you i mean you can i can run on the treadmill for 12 hours for you if that's what you're going to pay me it's fine but all of us uh, we don't we don't get that we have to live a life <clears throat> so we cannot emulate a person whose entire world rotates around uh being skinny so to speak so uh, we don't want to do that we want to have long healthy lives uh yes sudarshana says i have thyroid i'm aware of that uh, we'll be talking about that tomorrow as to uh, how we can uh live uh, you know have some sort of a decent lifestyle sudarshana daily exercise will make a big difference to you huh? having uh, working out every day bringing down stress levels and by stress it doesn't necessarily mean that i'm a kind of person who's hot tempered and i scream and shout it could be stress of uh irregular day uh, hours it could be stress of um, other stress environmental stress stuff from home these things reducing these levels will greatly improve your thyroid condition uh more so than medication also so maybe you could talk talk about those also tomorrow and uh yeah so that um so those would be the things we'll be talking about tomorrow and day after the reason i started this entire program was to introduce wellness and health to everybody so that it is approachable affordable doable possible to be healthy and fit and when i say healthy and fit i don't just mean uh okay fine my diet is all right and my fitness is okay i get little half an hour exercise every day i'm fine no this is where you can this is a great foundation for you thank you sudarshana says trying to work out every day at least for 20 minutes that's exactly what i'm saying if you do this every single day for 20 minutes sudarshana there'll come a time when you'll be like okay i can do half an hour okay i can do one hour and then one day it will be like i i don't really uh, eat entire cheesecakes anymore and i don't really eat unhealthy anymore and when it is my time to eat i eat that's how i am i know that my body doesn't function well at all at its optimum when it's hungry so i eat first that's just how maybe fortunately for me i'm a freelancer i have that option maybe a lot of you guys don't so there is probably a middle ground you can work out maybe there's an option to carry something along from home everybody can make a sandwich right so try and provide for your own health try and work it into some into your life as something that you uh, you decide to do you choose to do and aim towards getting fitter so if somebody wants to join a marathon in a year's time i would say your training starts now it starts even before you start training for the marathon because your mindset and your lifestyle has to be like that so um that was my reason for uh, doing this 21 day program i would like you guys if you could to join me again tomorrow um and we we'll talk about hormonal issues and imbalances and how we can make sure that we stay on our health path through that uh over that speed bump and if there are any other questions that you might have please do ask and uh, thank you so much for joining in and uh, much love bye